Today we're going to multiply with regrouping. I have a problem like 14 times 3. We know from our past lessons we can use models to help us. So I could use place value blocks to make three 14s. So there's one 14, two 14s, and three 14s. Now that I have this broken into tens and ones, I can figure out how many ones I have, which would be three times four, which is 12. Um, but I can't fit 12 in my ones place value. So I can only put one digit in each place value. So I have my ones, I have my tens. Um, so that's not gonna work. So what I can do is I can take 10 of these ones and I can combine them into another 10. So now those are gone. They make a 10. So now how many ones do I have? I have two left because I made the other 10 of my 12 a 10, which leaves me just with a 2. So now I have one extra 10. I'm going to put that 10 up in my 10s place. So I have one extra 10. Now I'm going to multiply my 3 times my 10. So if I have 3 tens, I have 3 tens. But I also still have that extra 1 that I made with my 1s. So I have 3 tens plus 1, which makes 4 tens. So 14 times 3 equals 42. So when you're regrouping, you have to remember to add that extra 10. My second example, I have 34 times 6. So once again, I really don't need to be drawing those pictures anymore, hopefully. So I have my ones, I have 6 times 4 ones, which is 24 ones. But I can't fit 24 in my ones. So I'm going to have to put 20 of those into my tens. And if I have 20, that is two tens. And then it leaves me with my four ones. Now I multiply my 6 times 3, which is 18. Then I need to add in my extra two tens. So 18 plus 2 is 20. I can't put 20 in my tens place. There's only room for one digit. So if I have 20 tens, I can turn that into two hundreds, and I have nothing left. And then I really can just put that two down at the bottom, but I can pretend like this is six times zero, which is zero, plus my two extra hundreds. Zero plus two is two, so I have 204. But really, once you get to the last number on the left, you can just move that number down to the bottom. So 204. But my instructions up here at the top don't just say to multiply. They also say I need to check it. The easiest way to check is to use estimation. So if I round 34 to 30 times 6, use my zero trick. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 zero is 180. Since I changed my 34 to a 30, that's going to make this answer a little bit less, so my estimate is an underestimate, so I know the real answer is going to be a little bit more than 180, which I got 204, so I'd say that is reasonable. We do one more example, 17 times 4. We start with our 1's, 4 times 7 is 28. I put my 20 into two tens and my 8 here in my 1's column. Then I multiply my 10's, 4 times 1 10 is 4, plus my two extra 4 plus 2 is 6. Then I check for reasonableness. 
around 17 to 20 times 4. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 0, which is 80. Since I rounded up from 17 to 20, I know this is going to be an overestimate, so the real answer is going to be slightly less. 68 is slightly less than 80, so I'm going to say that that is reasonable. Now it's time for you to do two practice problems. Here's your first one. 23 times 4. Go ahead and multiply that and then check it. I would use estimation and then unpause and we'll see how you did. Okay, 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 2 is 8 plus our extra one is 9. And let's check it. 20 times 4 is 80. And that's an underestimate. So 92 seems reasonable. Practice problem number 2. Multiply 45 times 7. Then check for reasonableness. Go ahead and pause. Okay, 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 3 is 29, 30, 31. And let's check it. 50 times 7 is 350, so I'd say that's reasonable. Okay, if you're feeling good about those two practice problems, we've got four more that we're going to check in class tomorrow. So number one, 34 times 2. Number two, 15 times 7. Number three, 26 times 4. And number four, 37 times 8. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.